Let me tell you about this lady here. Um, this lady is as crazy as we are or more. She is an apostolic leader in the kingdom of God. She's really one of our heroes. We just watch how the Lord has used her over the years and just does one thing after another that most people would not dare to do. But she just does. And uh, she has pastored for many years. She was a multiplier of campuses. She was a multi-site church campus pastor. Uh, she's always involved in something with missions, going overseas and supporting and such. But more recently, she has this amazing ministry uh, called WIMO, a Women in Leadership Ministry, and ministering to women to bring confidence to them, to bring scripture to them, encouraging words, to network them and such, so that they realize, hey, look, we're not left out. We are commissioned by the Lord. We're called of the Lord to make disciples of all nations and to fulfill our callings right along with everybody else. And let me tell you, it's working. I mean, there are so many women. In fact, we have some young women right now that are in one of her cohorts right now being ministered to, and they love it. They love it. But this is a grace that's on her life. And we just keep watching, Mary, and these things happen. I asked her to come up here and bring a greeting, but I had something else in mind because we want to honor her tonight. But I will have you bring a greeting, too. But let me tell you what else is significant here. And this is something historical that was a game changer for our ministry. You see, in 2003, we launched this discipleship system called Operation Solid Lives. And I mean, by that point, we must have had, 2003, we must have already had four or 500 people come into church, a three-year-old church, and the Lord was blessing us and such. And so I let them know, hey, disciple making, discipleship, if you want your life to be changed, get into this. And so for a number of weeks, I cast a vision to everybody, every service, every week and such, and we got 25 people to join the very first level one class, which we called at that point boot camp. And uh, that was it. I was a little disappointed. I thought, man, I thought more people would come. Didn't I tell them it was life-changing? <laughs> but it was life-changing for those. And then they told other people. And so then we did another one. And then we went on and did level two, but we did another level one. And then we did another level two. Then we went on and do level three. But we did another level one, another level two. And we just kept building it like that. And that was a lot of work. Not as much as Jesus' disciple, but that was a lot of work back then. <laughs> And we were doing it, and it was working. And our church was growing, and people were being changed and enriched by the word of God. And then I was invited out by Pastor Mary and Kimberly and I were to speak. They would have these family camps that were absolutely they're amazing. But we went out to speak this time. We got to talking about OSL and things. She was asking questions. She, and finally, she said, okay, we need it. How do we get it? And I said, oh, uh, we just designed it for our church, so it's really you know, we didn't design it to export anywhere else. It just, you know, we designed it for us. And she said, well, I know, but we need it. So how do we get it? <laughs> and this is, <laughs> this is Marion, right? If she knows it's the right thing, well, you're going to tell me, no, it's, this is what we need to do. But I didn't know that's what we needed to do. But we love her and she's kind to us. And so, you know, we'll just keep answering the questions. And so I said, I, I don't know. I don't know how we'll do that because we really didn't think about it for another church. We just designed it to function with us here at The Rock. You know, and our mission is Operation Solid Lives. That's why it's called Operate. Our mission is Building Solid Lives, so that's why it's called Operation Solid Lives. It's for us. And she said, okay, so how do we do it? <laughs> so I, I don't know. I said, I guess we can talk about it and figure it out. So... Um, well, I'm a smart guy. So I said, Tammy, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and so Tammy and Marion got together, and they figured it out. And Tammy went out to Arizona and implemented OSL. Little did we know that the Lord was using Marion to get this out of our church and to let discipleship begin to go to eventually hundreds of churches and 35 nations, and then with OSL Online, 117 nations and so on. But let me tell you, that was not a vision that we had. We, had, we did not see that. She did it right there. 
And yeah. Yeah. And we, uh, we did not realize at the time. We thought, well, we'll help this church. But we didn't realize that the Lord was using Marion to provoke something for the release. Let it go. Let it go. And so now you can see with Jesus' disciple, we don't even think about just our church. We're thinking about lots of things. Isn't that right? But part of that was Marion being used. And so, Marion, we want to honor you because uh, two are better than one, and they have a good reward for their labor. And you helped us to go into a level of ministry that we didn't realize we were called to go into. And we're so blessed and we're so thankful. We got a little card here to thank you. We've got some flowers here for you as well. Would you help me honor our friend, disciple maker, Marion Ingenieri? our hearts thank you thank you you may be seated and uh we really do love you and we honor you and you really are something special and i tell you what what the lord is doing in you now there's something big in the future and i believe that the impact of these next years will be more than anything you've done before by the grace of god okay uh kimberly hold these four would you greet us now marion uh, I did want her to greet us because she is a partner in the ministry and a real, I, I just read this morning uh, early in the scriptures where Paul said, and I want you to take care of these women who have been partnering with us in the ministry. I just love that the apostle Paul called out these women and said they were partnering with me. He didn't say they were my servants, even though they no doubt were serving, but he said they were partnering with me in the gospel. And so this is one of our partners. So greet us, would you? Okay. I'm not sure I can. But <laughs> wow. I, I didn't. I, you can understand I didn't see that coming. Yeah, um, I knew that. Wow. Uh, I was actually trying to get you a message that you don't need to have me greet tonight. We want to hear her preach. <laughs> so um, I, first of all, thank you from the bottom of my heart, both of you. It's an honor to partner with you. And thank you for saying yes. Thank you, Tammy, for helping us in 2007. Poor girl. I, it was July of 2007, and I said I need it by September. <laughs> and they said, well, it's chicken scratch notes. And I said, that'll work for me. <laughs> and um, I, I am grateful to be a part of this ministry. And, um, and we were happy when we were able to celebrate 10 years with you on the OSL. We brought you to our church and celebrated what God had done in 10 years of just all OSL. And look and see what God will do now with Jesus' disciple. And, um, and if I'm honest, the truth is I'm a selfish little pig. <laughs> because they had something so good and so fantastic. And I'm like, why is this just for the rock? Why can't we have it too? And um, so we have it. But it has changed my life. It's changed our children's lives. It's changed our church, our network. It's changed my trajectory as a leader. And um, my thought process to all of us tonight, I'll just leave you with this, is we might be asking ourselves, are we too mature or not mature enough? Or are we somewhere in between, not able to do Jesus' disciple? And I can tell you this, that when you first become a believer, that's when you can start discipling others. You don't have to wait until you're fully grown up. Just start discipling others now. And... If you think, and the problem is, I would say that so many of us, we get older in the Lord, and we get busy doing things of church life, and we stop discipling people. And I think that's the bigger category to worry about, that we're never too mature to disciple people. 
So let us be disciples and let us be Jesus' disciples and do what he's asking us to do. I'm so absolutely blown away to be able to be a partner with this and in the network and all of all of what God has. I'll keep you busy because I keep having questions and I've already contacted a ton of people. I already started my first group and uh, I have some young women that I'm going to invite to my first group. And, um, and you know it's important when somebody gives their life to Christ that there's somebody to talk to. Somebody to talk to. Our grandson just rededicated, or just dedicated, just became a full-on, total, absolute, our Abner is just on fire for Jesus. He's 17 years old, and this just happened in our family. And he was just kind of even never against the Lord, but now we see him on fire. And you know what happens in his house? It's boys and Bibles all over the house, and he's discipling. My daughter asked him, Abner... What about all your friends that didn't go to church? He said, oh, no problem, Aunt Carrie. Any of our, my friends that don't know Jesus, I'll just evangelize them. <laughs> That's it. So this is our assignment to be Jesus' disciple and raise up disciples to disciple others. And so I am honored to be a part of it. It is a blessing, and I just speak life and grace and peace over you, over this ministry. Jonathan, there's just a special anointing on you, young man. I've watched you grow up, and I just want to see all that God has for you just as you you expand and do all the work of the ministry. And uh, may the Lord bless every single minister in this room, because who are the ministers? That's right. That wasn't loud enough. Who are the ministers? We are. That's right. Thank you, Marion.